YX. We are so excited that you are here joining us this morning. Today, we're in week three of our series, Anthem. This series, we're talking all about worship and how it affects our lives. But first, we have a game to play. So feel free to participate when we start in just a few minutes. Hey everyone, hey everyone, hey everyone, yeah. hey everyone, hey everyone, hey everyone, hey everyone, um, I don't have a person, not yet, hello everyone, welcome to the YX pre-show, yeah, we have another game today, I think it's so fun, but I want to ask for a volunteer before I actually tell you what the game is. Do we have any brave volunteers? Brave people in the room. Trevor, thank you. Yes, please give Trevor a hand. Trevor gave an awesome message last week. Huh? Actually, Trevor, you can step right behind this microphone. Thank you. Uh, could you raise it for yourself just a little bit? You twist. There you go. Okay, and then, perfect. Check, check, check. Trevor is on the mic. And now, Trevor, you're going to blindfold yourself, please. Double mask. Why? <laughs> we're double masking. While Trevor does that, I'm going to tell all of us the game that we're playing. It's called What's Behind Me? And that's basically what Trevor's asking is, what is behind me? And so we're gonna show a slide, a picture in a minute. And I'm gonna do my absolute best to describe to Trevor what's in that picture so that he can guess the words. And you guys may need to help me. Honestly, last service, I did need help, but make sure you do not shout out the underlined words. No underlined words, but help me get him there. Uh, Trevor, I know you can't see anything or probably breathe. No ma'am, no ma'am. But there's like five or six different rounds Okay. I think if we work as a team, all of us, we can get through all five or six. So that's our goal. Cool? Ready? Ready. Let's do this. Slide number one, please. 
Here we go. Okay, this is a superhero who's like okay. slings webs. Spider-Man. Very good. And Spider-Man is on a blank, and they're in the forest, and they're really tall, and they have leaves, and... He's on a tree? Okay, phew. Spider-Man on a tree holding a... This is a drink that has, like, dairy in it and fruit, and it's, like, kind of dessert, kind of, and it's really yummy, and Stra it's thick. Strawberry milkshake? I'll take that. Spider-Man on a tree holding a milkshake. Would you like to take a peek, Trevor, behind you to see what you've accomplished? Uh, yeah, let's, let's do it. You see where this game is going now. Oh, look at that. Spider-Man on a tree holding a milkshake. That's pretty good. Well, we've got two minutes and 30 seconds. Let's see if we could blast through. Let's go, let's go, let's the go. The next couple rounds. This is a Disney character who goes from being like a street rat to a prince, and he flies on a magic carpet. Oh. Oh, my gosh. That, no, Help no. me, everybody. Uh, Don't say the name. I was literally about to say Ratatouille. That was bad. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> oh, wait, okay, oh. he marries a princess. Who okay. has like a, a tiger as a pet? Oh no! Oh, I need I need some help. I need some help. I need some help. Um, Weird. What's the song that they sing? A whole Aladdin? Yeah, good job. Okay, Aladdin in a blank. This is a place that has no water, a lot of sand, no trees. A desert. Very good. Aladdin in the desert, holding his. This is the meal that you eat in the middle of the day. Lunch. Good. Aladdin in the desert holding his lunch. We're going to queue to the next one because okay, I really want to make let's it go, through. Let's go. We got it. We got this it. This is something that lives in the ocean that people are mostly afraid of. Sharks. Yes. Okay. But the shark is wearing this beam. It's something that cats like to chase. Beanie? Wait, what? A beam. beam. Oh, a beam. Yeah. An ultralight beam. Cats let's... like to chase this type of beam. A uh, laser. Yes. A laser shark shooting a, this is a dessert. That's like individual and it's got frosting on it and it's delicious. And Cake. You, yes, pie. but it's individual. Like you can make multiple Slices, of <laughs> cookies, brownies. Uh, no, like you you put them in a pan at all one pan, but like individual spots and you bake Muffins. them. Muffins. Oh, you're so close. It's just like a muffin, but it's much sweeter. More of a cake version of a muffin. Cake pop. Oh, heavens. <laughs> what else, guys? What else can I tell them? Okay. One little thing that has like a paper wrapper around the bottom that has frosting Muffin on top. Muffin cupcake. Cupcake, you did it. Laser shark shooting a cupcake. Okay, let's get to the next one. I think we might be able to make it. This is a Star Wars character that's like okay. the evil guy that's all in black. Darth Vader. Yes, holding. This is what you give people on their birthday and it has helium in it. A balloon? Darth Vader holding balloons in. This is what happens in winter when it's so cold that rain turns to... Snow. Very good. Darth Vader holding balloons in snow. We have, what, 14 seconds? Okay, okay here go, we go. go. Another superhero who, like, wears black and has a cape. And, Batman. Like, what did you say? Batman? Yeah, except for it's a different version of Batman because they made multiple movies like this with, like, the little toys that are, like, building blocks that every little kid played with. They came in, like, red, yellow, blue, and you, like, build them to make, like, homes and towers and castles. <laughs> and what? <laughs> Oh my gosh, I okay. forfeit on that one. Little, little toys. Oh, we ran out of time. Well done, Trevor. Thank you can you. look at the last one. How many we got? Three? I two? think we got three or four. You only missed two. Okay. Good job. Thank Thanks you. for playing. Thank Thanks, everybody, for coming early for the show and for helping me, especially with Aladdin. That seemed to be a struggle. Slowly things are getting a little bit more normal, like we brought games back, we're going to camp. We missed camp last year, but we're going to camp. Who's going to camp? Yeah. Who's going to camp for the very first time? Me too. My very first time at camp. You are not alone. 
We're also bringing back summer events and we're really, really excited. So I know you get busy during the summer, but please mark your calendars for June 16th. It's our first summer crossover, the YX Summer Kickoff, and we want you to be there, but we're not gonna tell you what we're gonna do yet. Just make sure you mark your calendars. Matt's gonna speak today and he's gonna take us into week three of Anthem. And we're just gonna talk some more about worship what it means to worship, how we can worship. So to start off, we're gonna worship. Would you mind standing with me and we'll worship together. God of creation, 
there at the start before the beginning of time with no point of reference you spoke to the dark and fleshed out the wonder of light and as you speak
hearts, Lord, that they are perfect in your eyes. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, hey everybody, how we doing? Yeah! Hey, welcome to high school. My name is Matt, I'm so glad you guys are here. Uh, this is uh, my favorite part of my week, every single week, is being here for YX again in person. Uh, somebody just told me this uh, backstage. It was you, you told me, Lucas. Yeah, I'll give you a shout out since you're right there. Uh, we came back March 7th, which means we've been back for seven weeks, which also means, this is the mind blower right here, We've been in, like back in person for half the time that we got before we got shut down in the student building. We were, only got 14 Sundays in the student building before the shutdown. And so we're halfway there to this being the longest run in the student building. How crazy is that? That's pretty cool. I love that. Uh, hey, uh, I also agree with Victoria that I'm really excited to see some protocols, some things get loosened up so that we can do more and more. I love that we have games back. I love that we have a crossover night on the calendar coming up. Uh, but if you remember back before, if you were around, the first crossover we ever had in this space was one called the housewarming party. And it was an incredible night. It was an awesome night to come in here and celebrate and to really kind of dedicate. We talked about gratitude and how grateful we are for uh, a church that believes in the next generation. And we had an incredible night. We had a sumo contest. We did all kinds of uh, fun stuff. And we actually had a photographer come in and capture photos of the night. And he caught incredible photos like this one during our message. Remember when you got to sit right next to each other? How cool was that, you know? Uh, but uh, I got to come clean. Um, the photographer took a rap for something that was actually my fault that night. Uh, so if you were there, anybody who was here for the housewarming party? So we haven't talked about this. I think it's time to talk about it. Uh, we had uh, a mishap, if you will, during worship. Uh, I refer to the mishap as the flashing. That's what I call it. And so I'm showing the photographer around before the event. He's never been to our church. He's never been to a church like ours. Uh, you know, he had a, a different background. Uh, and he, I tell him, hey, it's probably going to be pretty, pretty dark in the room during worship, just a heads up. And he goes cool, do you mind if I use a flash during worship so I can like, still get some photos and everything? And without me even thinking about the consequences, without me even thinking about the ramifications of what that meant, I said, sure, have at it, man, go for it. And so <laughs> I wanna show you from my mistake of not thinking what it, what it would mean to blind people by the light during worship, I wanna show you some photos of worship, never before seen photos of the flashing. Here we go. <laughs> Here we have right here, Scarlett is just like doing her best to think about Jesus and not, you know, pay attention to her retinas burning out of her, her eyes here. And, uh, and Sophia here, she's just like, you can tell she's, she's in it. Like she just got caught completely off guard. The photographer snuck up on her. And so in this next photo, you ever have something weird happen to you? And so like, you don't know how to process it. So you just smile through it. So here's Sophia just trying to figure out and make sense of like what just happened. Like, you know, was it the rapture? What was that? Like, I don't know what just happened to me. And this next photo, now reality set in. And she's going, okay, bro. Like for real, did you, just, did you just blind me with that? And so you see the full progression. And even here, you start to see the smile cracking right here because it's, let's admit it, it's a hilarious situation. It's a hilarious one. Here's the next one. 
This is Paige going, it hurts so bad, but I am not going to show it. Like, whatever I do, I am not breaking. This is worship, people. I am going to pay attention, and it's, it's no big deal. No big deal. Just blind me. I don't even care. Here's the next one. This guy, man, he, Tim and Jesus, he's having a good time in worship. He gets flashed. Let's not quote that out of context, but he gets flashed. He goes, bro, did you use a flash during worship? And so he takes his praise hand here, and he suddenly turns it into a wave hand. You know, just, <laughs> just a little bit of that. So he makes the best of that situation. Next one here, we have Olivia. And so Tori's really getting the, the brunt of it here, but Olivia, like, it's funny for her. Like, it's really funny. So she's like, this is my try not to laugh, and then like, okay, it's too funny. I gotta, I gotta laugh about this. This next one's my favorite. This is <laughs> Dylan, Nate, and Jonah going, don't even think about it. Like, that's what that face is. So uh, I'm backstage getting ready to speak, and uh, somebody comes and finds me like, hey, do you know the, the photographer's like, using a flash during worship and like blinding and being really distracting. And I didn't want to come clean them up. I was like, really? Wow. Oh, yeah. Oh, gosh. I don't know. Maybe I should go talk to him. And so I, I let him take the fall that night. I go and find him. And I'm like, hey, man, my mistake. Uh, you don't use the flash anymore. It's kind of, and he was super cool about it. He was great. And so we kept going on with the night. No flash. But people weren't ready to take their guard down just yet. So here's Jacob Labrie. The flash is gone. And he's got... My hands are up to Jesus, but my eyes are on you, Mr. Photographer. He's not letting his guard down. He is, he is ready to, to make sure that this guy doesn't hit him with that flash. So it's fun to, to admit that. It's fun. I feel like I just got, I came clean that that was not actually on the photographer that was on me. But I want to show you a, a few of these photos of worship and talk about worship. We've been in this series, this is week three now, of talking about what does it mean to, to worship. And so as we look at these, these images of worship... We'll see people singing out loud. We'll see people lifting their hands. Maybe you've wondered that before of like, hey, why, like, why would I go to YX? Why are there some people with their hands up? Why, why are people singing out loud? It really is just something that from the early church on in Acts 2, we saw that when Christians got together, when followers of Jesus got together, one of the ways that they worshiped was by singing songs together. It was just something that was established by the early church. But you'll even see the hands lifted up. This is an old practice. You see in the Old Testament, you see in the New Testament, this is just an expression. Whenever you see hands up, people are making a physical expression of what's happening on the inside of them. And so we have verses like these that show us, here's why we're doing it. And we see this in worship, we see it in prayer. I will praise you as long as I live. And in your name, I will lift up my hands. Here's a New Testament one. In every place of worship, I want men to pray with holy hands lifted up to God. And even in Lamentations, we see this inward expression coming out outwardly. Let us lift up our hearts and our hands to God. He's making that correlation of this is a sign of what my heart is doing. As I lift my hands, as I sing out loud, that's my worship. So that's why we dedicate usually three songs every single time we get together, because we think it's important to express our worship that way to God. But here's the thing. It's not the only thing that worship is. It's a great expression when believers get together, when followers of Jesus get together, they worship and sing songs to God. But thinking of worship only as the three songs on Sunday, it's kind of like taking an iPhone and only using it to make phone calls. This happened recently. My, uh, my wife is right back here and her uh, mom you, uh, just updated from a flip phone, you know, like an actual flip phone to an iPhone 12. That's a leap. Like, that is a big leap. That's like a, a, a Pinto to a Ferrari. Like, like that's, a, that's a huge leap that she made. And so over the last couple of weeks, I have heard, overheard many conversations where Katie is walking her mom through how to use a phone now that doesn't just make phone calls or T9 or the old text way. And so uh, usually the conversations, if it's on speaker and I can hear uh, her mom, it usually ends with some kind of expression of, my phone can do that now? Like, it's just like mind boggling for her the, the capabilities of this iPhone 12. Well, worship is that same way where like, if we only see it as the three songs on Sunday, it's like using an iPhone only to make phone calls. It's great. It's a really important function of worship, but it's not all that worship is. There's so much more to worship. So just to open up our perspective of what worship is, I have a few more photos of some images of worship. So here they are. Here's a Snapchat streak right here. Got 214, got 600, got 894. 
Now, not like, oh, I broke it because I went to camp or something. What is your strongest, like, current snap streak with a friend right now? Anybody? Let's see who's got the best snap streak. How many? Go ahead. Yeah, you can. 30? 30 is pretty good. We had a uh, Jay Hire say that he had a friend who uh, had a million, and we're like, there's no way. Your friend's not 3,000 years old. Like, that, that's impossible. Anybody else? I heard 30. Anybody can beat 30? 191. 191, right? I think the contest is over right there. That's great. So 191. Anybody higher than 191? What is it? 320, almost a year. That's, that's a pandemic streak right there. That's what that is. That's awesome. So there's a snap streak. Here's another image. This is one gets me. So here's people getting ready to go into a, a Dodger game. I love the, the flag turned into a cape. That's a strong look right here. This is actually the jersey that I have too, Kike Hernandez, who's no longer a Dodger. RIP, he's alive, but he plays for the Red Sox. Um, so there's an image of worship. Here's another one. So here's what I gotta say. And I, I, would, I would have your back like with this big time because here's the thing. We'll take young people and go, oh, they're always on their phones. Like look at them at the restaurants. Older people do this stuff too, right? Like, like, they, like we get the rap for always being on our phones and addicted to our phones. I'm telling you, the older generation does it too. Like you'll see adults out, like fully grown adults going, man, kids, they won't get off their phones. And their table will look like this at the restaurant too, right? It's okay. You can, you can, it's a safe place. You can go, I, I see it too. I see it too. And so this is a problem for all of us that we forget the daily interaction. And that might be one of the best things coming out of this pandemic is hopefully all of us are sick of our phones and we're ready to have some face-to-face -face interaction. Here's the last one. Now, this is not a footlocker. This is a guy's closet. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you think I got a problem. This guy, look at this guy. These are, these are his, this is his Jordans collection. And so he has, I don't even know how many pairs of Jordans. He's got so many. And so I'm okay with my baker's dozen. I'll, I'll be just fine because here he is. But the only, thing, only difference between this guy and, and, and me is probably money. Let's be real. That's probably, that's my dream. I look at that and go, oh man, that's so excessive. And I'm like, how could I do that? <laughs> anyway. So I want to show you these images of, of worship because I want you to see what worship really is. It's not just when we sing to God. Here's what worship actually is. Worship is when you give someone or something your attention, your love, and your esteem. That's what worship is, is when you give something or someone your attention, your love, and your esteem. What does it look like? Man, what are those conversations that you just want to have so badly? Who's the first person you want to talk to when you get up in the morning? Who's the last person you want to talk to when you, before you go to bed? What are those things you're like, man, if I save up my money and get this? What are those things you're like, if I make this team or if I get in with this friend group? What are those things that are getting your attention, your love, your esteem of going, I want to lift this up because I think this is so cool? Here's the truth of how God made us, and it's really a, a cool thing that, that reflects him in a lot of ways, is he made us to find beauty in life. He made us to look for things, to value those things. He made us to live beyond just ourselves. And so we are, by nature, are wired for worship. We're, by nature, wired to take things and give them value and cherish them and esteem them and, and, and attribute importance to them in our lives. And so this thing in us is called worship. It's giving our attention, our love, and our esteem to something because we know it's worth that value that we attribute to it. It's worth it to us. And so that's why we're worshipers. It's not a, a, a question of whether or not you'll worship. It really is the question of what you'll choose to worship. That's what worship is. It's what gets our hearts, what gets our attention, what, gets, what, what do we want to talk about, what do we want to spend our money on. All this stuff is what worship really is. Here's how I want to like bring this back to God, because obviously we get together on Sundays. That's how we sing songs. That's when we worship together as a group. And so if we know worship is all around us, if we know we're constantly looking for worship, what does that look like in our day-to-day -day lives when it comes to Jesus? Like, what does that look like in our day-to-day -day lives of going, Matt, should I not like buy stuff? Should I not go to Dodger games? I'd be a big hypocrite if I said that. So let me show you what it actually is. This is the viewpoint change for you. Here's what worship really is. Worship is not just an experience. It's not that you just come in for a worship service. Worship is an expense. What do I mean by that? Worship is something that you give. You give attention to it. 
You give affection to it. You give it esteem. You give it value. You cherish it. So worship is something that you actually spend. It's an expense. It's something that you give. It's something that you spend. And so worship is simply something that gets your attention, your love, your affection. There's some kind of cost involved for you when it comes to worship. This is why Romans 12.1 says it this way. It says, and so, dear brothers and sisters, this is believers, followers of Jesus, I plead with you to give your bodies to God. Key word, give. Give your bodies to God because of all he has done for you. What's so cool about worship is that we know that when it comes to Jesus and a relationship with him, there's so much he's given us, right? Like the, we can't earn it. He already died for us. He bar, he's already defeated sin and death for us. And so we accept that gift as it is. Worship is one of those only things that God says, that's actually what I want you to give me back. Out of all the things he's given me, the one thing he really wants me to give him back is worship. And so it says, give your bodies to God because of all he has done for you. You can't outgive God. He's already given you more than you could ever give him back. It says, let them be a living and holy sacrifice, the kind he will find acceptable. This is truly the way to worship him. The sacrifice word is huge when it comes to this idea of worship. We know that Jesus was the ultimate sacrifice. What does that mean? He took this Old Testament idea that we have of sacrifice. He took this idea that people used to do to worship God where they would offer him something. So what would they do? The Old Testament sacrifice was this idea of, I'm gonna bring God like the best, like the best of what I have. And so if it was a crop, if it was like the best of their livestock, they would come and sacrifice. They would offer their crops, their livestock to God before Jesus came along and became the ultimate sacrifice. And so sacrifice was this idea of, what do I give God and how do I give him my best? And so Romans coming in after Jesus was the ultimate sacrifice, what is it saying? You're now the living sacrifice. Giving of yourself every single day is the way you give God worship back. You don't have to keep offering him the livestock, the crops. You don't have to try to make amends because the sins have been covered. And so what do I give him now in response is my worship. And so it says that you are the living and holy sacrifice. When you do that, that's worship. It's this idea of expense, of giving God something that's an offering. And so now, how you live every single day is worship. How you choose to live is you making your body, your life, your decisions, your interactions, your, your social media posts, whatever it is, what you give and how you live is your worship. And so as God has done so much for me, he's given me hope. He's given me strength. He's given me Jesus. He's forgiven my sins. What I look for in my everyday life now is some kind of sacrifice and gift for God. Let me make it really practical. For you, it might be the crossroads of what I want versus what God wants for my life. There's some times, and, I, and, and it happens to me too, where I want a certain thing for my life and I think it's best, but then I look at scripture or I look at what God says or I talk to somebody that follows Jesus and it's very clear that God wants something else for my life. So what do you do with that crossroads of what I want for my life and what God wants for my life? You sacrifice what you want for worship. Everything in you will tell you it's right for me to hold a grudge. It's right for me to never forgive this person. It's right for me to hold on to what they've done wrong to me, where God says, no, I want you to, to forgive them because it's the best thing for you. Even if you can't see that, what worship says is I'll sacrifice what I want and I'll forgive them, not for their sake, but for worship's sake, to love God. If you look at something in scripture and you go, I don't wanna live that way. Like that is not the lifestyle that I wanna have. That's not what I see. What's well, a sacrifice to go, his ways are better than my ways. His opinion trumps my opinion. I don't want my opinion. I'm gonna sacrifice what I want for worship. If you really like your small friend group and you like that you guys all know each other and it's, it's that safe bubble, but God's saying, hey, I want you to reach more people for me. I want you to have more conversations. I want you to invite more people to church. You sacrifice what you want for worship. It's an expense. You give something. You see how you just don't come and just be a part of something? You see how it's not just a spectator sport when it comes to worship? There's some kind of skin in the game for you. There's some kind of expense. There's some kind of giving of yourself that you do. And so this sacrifice thing is an incredible thing because we know anytime we sacrifice for Jesus, it's a gift that is worth giving. 
Because he meets us right there and we experience more of them past the Sunday. We sacrifice that morning what we want and we choose what he wants and we experience more of his peace, his love, his joy, his goodness in our lives. And it makes it easier to offer the sacrifice the next day. It makes it so much easier to want to keep sacrificing and giving of myself because worship is so worth it. I think David got this perfectly. So there's a story in the Old Testament where David is uh, going to build an altar to offer worship to God. He's going to offer his sacrifice to God. And so he goes and he finds a property that's owned by this guy named Arona. And he goes, this is perfect. This is where I want to build the altar. This is where I want to offer God a sacrifice. And Arona is like, this is, this is King David. Like, and I, I love God. And this, is, and this is my king that God's put over me. And so Arona just goes, dude, I'm not going to sell you the property. I'm going to give it to you. I'm not going to have you go buy the supplies for the altar. I'm going to give you the supplies for the altar. He's like, and you don't have to go find livestock to, to offer to God. I'm going to give you all that. And so Arona is just like, everything that you need to worship God, I'm going to give it to you, uh, David. That's what I want to do. Listen to David's response, because I think this is exactly the picture of what worship is. He says, but King David replied to Arona, no. No, I'm not going to let you do all the work for me. I'm not going to let you sell me your property or give me your property for no cost. I'm not going to let you give me the, the, the supplies that cost you something. I'm not going to let you give me your uh, livestock. He says, I insist on buying it for the full price. I don't want a discount. I don't want you to cheapen it for me because I'm the king. I will not take what is yours and give it to the Lord. He says, I will not present burnt offerings that have cost me nothing. What is David saying? I refuse to have a zero cost approach to worship. It's great for you, Arona, that you have all this that you want to give God, but that's your worship. It's not my worship. And think about this. We can come into a Sunday morning and we can see other people giving their worship and we can feel like we were a part of something because we saw their sacrifice. We saw their gift and we could still be spectators. I want to refuse to let someone else just be the one that worships God and I don't give something. And so I'm not coming in, even on Sunday mornings, just to get worship. I'm not coming in for the band to strike it up, and then I'm going to just hopefully enjoy the songs enough or know them enough. I'm going to choose to have some skin in the game, and I'm going to have something that costs me for my worship. Think about that. What could be that next level of sacrifice to where it gets you out of just convenience worship? It gets you out of just, well, if it's right and, the, and you know, I'm, not, I'm not tired or I'm not just, you know, going through the motions or I had a long night or I stayed up all night. What would take you out of convenience living to where you go, no, no, I refuse to not give something. I have to give something. Maybe for you, the next step could just simply be, hey, I hate my singing voice, but you just choose to sing it out loud anyway. I, I told myself I wasn't going to tell the story, but we have this young adult. I, I lead young adult ministry now, too. And his singing voice is terrible. It is awful. Love him to death. It's got, he's got, yeah, I think I'm bad. And then I listen to this guy and I feel better about me. <laughs> it's true. But I would never, ever tell him to stop singing out loud. You want to know why? Because I hear him giving his worship. And it makes me want to give my worship too. And it makes me want to turn the band a little bit louder too. It's both. I want him to give his worship. And so it's not about singing pretty. It's not about, it's, if anything, we can, you know, the Bible talks about a joyful noise and we can make our joyful noise and sing out loud to him. Maybe for you, it's not the singing out loud. Maybe it's just simply being a little bit more expressive physically with what your heart's doing. Like, man, I don't know. People are going to look at me. I promise people won't look at you. People won't flash you with a camera ever again. We made that mistake. We've moved on from that. If you want to lift your hands, do it because it's just saying, God, I want to give you something and this is the best way I can express it in this moment. I want to lift my hands and show you what my heart's doing. Maybe for you, you've had that encounter before. You're like, oh, man, that message was so good and you didn't take any notes and you're like, man, what do you say? It's like Monday. It was really good. I want to remember it. Maybe for you, your next gift of worship is to go, you know what? Yeah, I could just chill. Maybe I need to write like one thing down that really stood out to me. Maybe what would it look like if we just chose to not have convenience? I'm only here for the experience worship. And we chose to be worshipers who refuse to not give anything. Think about this. If you looked every single day at ways to give your worship to God, how different would your life be? Well, Matt, what does that look like? I'll show you. This is Colossians 3.17. Here's what it says. It says, whatever you do 
whether in word or deed, that's what you say and what you do, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. What is it saying? When you want to give God something, the stuff that you're already doing, the stuff that you have to do, the stuff that you want to do, all that stuff, you can look for ways to worship God through that stuff. You can look for ways in your everyday life, whatever you say or whatever you do, to give God your attention, to give God your love, and to give God your esteem. If you're a talent on the basketball court and people ask you about it, it's an opportunity to open your mouth and give God some worship. If you see somebody really struggling, really going through something, maybe even borderline depression, it is a worship act to go and encourage them. If you're still on Zoom and you hate Zoom and you see all of your other friends on Zoom and they all are showing the teacher that they don't wanna be there, what would it be like for you to worship and give your attention to that classroom so that you make that teacher's day and you make, make them feel like they're actually making a difference, which they are. It would be a sacrifice and a gift of worship. What if you refused to have a zero cost approach to your worship? What if you didn't wait for its convenience? What if you look for ways to actively give your worship in whatever you do? In every word, in every deed, in every action, in every conversation, you can worship. You can give God the attention, love, and esteem that he deserves because we look for value and beauty and we won't find it any further than finding it in him. So I encourage you and I challenge you to not just experience worship, expense it. Let, let's pray. Jesus, thank you so much. God, let us have the heart of David that says, I will not let, I will not be a, 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 a passerby. I will not just be a spectator as others worship you. Arona, that's great that you worshiped. I wanna worship too. So God, help us have Colossians 3 in our hearts that whatever we do, we look for ways to honor you, we look for ways to hold you up in our lives. We look for ways to cherish you and value you because you are so much more You're worth everything we have. Our songs we sing on Sunday and how we live on Monday. God, be with us now as we give worship. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. It feels so good to worship God and to give him thanks every day for everything. The good stuff and even the hard stuff is all a blessing. So when we give thanks and praise him every single day, we start to see our lives and our relationships transform in this amazing way that we never thought possible. So when we're singing out this last song together, just take in this feeling of love and gratitude into your hearts and let him know how you feel and just see how worshiping God transform you. All right, let's stand up and sing together. See 
thank you for being our savior. God, I just pray that whatever each person in this room just gave you in worship, that you would accept it and that you would bless them, that you would help us to leave this space knowing that we can worship, we can worship you with our whole lives in so many ways. God, we just thank you so much for being so good and for loving us, and we love you. In Jesus' name, amen. That was awesome. I really love that. I love how Matt described worship is not just an experience, but an expense. Hey, thanks so much for joining us in worshiping and being community with us here at YX. If you're in a small group, give your leader just a few moments to get settled before you hop onto your virtual meeting. Next week, we're going to be wrapping up our series on worship. We'll hope to see you then. Have a great day. See you next week.